Bianca Belair received one of the loudest reactions of her career this past weekend in Puerto Rico, but unfortunately, it was also the nastiest. Coliseo de Puerto Rico popped for a lot of things, but they detested Bianca. We could chalk this up to Bizarre World and keep it pushing, sure, but it also might be time to turn Bianca heel. She's gone as far as she can as a babyface, and we're gonna get into four major reasons why Bianca has to now turn into the vilest heel WWE has seen in years. WWE, like the NFL, is a copycat league, particularly when it comes to crowds. WWE is touting backlash as the most viewed backlash in company history platform, up 28% which also means that that many more people saw Bianca get peppered with more booze than Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. I don't think Puerto Rico turned Bianca heel, but crowds will gradually pile on after Bianca got such a negative reaction at what is already a classic show. Thankfully, WWE will be in Bianca's home state of Tennessee for SmackDown, so they don't gotta worry about pushback there, but it's time to really start considering turning Bianca loose and telling deeper stories with an already popular character. And that brings me to the second reason Bianca needs to go heel, and that's character development. I don't think Bianca's reaction in Puerto Rico was a fluke. The crowd played nice for the entire pay-per-view and cheered the babyface while booing the heels. Bianca was the only babyface who got the John Cena treatment. Like John Cena, Bianca Belair is a charismatic, muscle-bound world beater. But by being so overpowered, fans might be getting restless with Bianca's cloak of invincibility. WWE needs to dig deeper and really invest in the Bianca Belair character. All we really know about her is she's from Tennessee, and she's the quickest, the strongest, roughest, the toughest, the ESTs, all of that. But now it's time to add layers. Pro wrestling is still getting used to black women as top stars, and it shows because WWE and AEW come up short when it comes to telling their stories. Bianca Belair essentially has a Jade Cargill problem, an uber talented super athlete whom you can't take your eyes off of. Bianca and Jade were essentially able to get themselves over because they're undeniable. Not because WWE or AEW had some great game-changing storyline or anything. Just listen to the commentary for their matches. Everything is, what a great athlete. Look at that freakish athleticism. What is this, draft night on ESPN? Now I'm just waiting for them to tell me how naturally gifted they are. <laughs> I'd like to know more about Bianca beyond how fast she can run or how high she can jump. WWE needs to give me something to digest with this character. Even if you have to keep her as a babyface, at least give her a hero's quest beyond beating everybody ass and going home. Yeah, she's married to Montez Ford. What's that relationship like? What's her motivation? How does she see the world? When people say Cody Rhodes needs more adversity, that's bullshit, but it might apply to Bianca. Like at Applebee's, they don't just roll out the same menu every month. If you were to walk into an Applebee's happy hour right now, you can get you a Bahama Mama all summer. Come Halloween, it's time for some Dracula juice. Then around Christmas, you can get shit-faced with a tipsy reindeer. When Applebee's inevitably becomes a presenting sponsor of this channel, I'm gonna make them celebrate Juneteenth with Freed Negronis. Nah, I ain't say free. I said Freed. Anyway, Bianca is in the opposite position of Rhea Ripley. Despite Rhea being overpowered in her own right, Rhea gets cheered as a heel. WWE already teased the feud between Rhea Ripley and Bianca, and if that were to happen today, fans would side with Rhea. Rhea and Bianca came to the main roster around the same time. Just look at Rhea three years ago when she faced Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania COVID and Rhea Ripley today. It's two completely different people. Rhea Ripley went from an upstart blonde powerhouse to a gothic final boss. From WrestleMania 36 to WrestleMania 39, she went from Marilyn Monroe to Marilyn Manson. And when it came time to win the title from Charlotte, it was a redemption story that fans got behind after they saw her fail three years ago. Bianca Belair, on the other hand, hasn't really changed at all. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, I get it. But wrestling fans are notorious for breaking toys even when they work just fine. So WWE best stay ready. Now, I'm not saying Bianca needs to fail or face adversity or any of that bullshit, but at the very least, she needs a story. And in this era of the fickle fan on social media, wrestling fans are constantly turning on talent whom they perceive aren't being challenged enough. Puerto Rico or not, maybe EO Sky should have been the babyface in that match. She's undersized, works a tremendous high-flying babyface style, and has never won a singles main roster title. This is a journey that fans are likely to get behind when she inevitably leaves damage control. And if EO gets back to chasing Bianca, Pavlovian fans could start booing Bianca all over again. I suggest WWE gets in front of it. And the biggest reason Bianca Belair should turn heel is she has a heel gimmick. Don't get me wrong, Bianca Belair is lovable and has done a great job as a top babyface in one of WWE's faces of the company. 
But let me ask you something. How is her catchphrase any different from MJF's? Every week, she's reminding you that she's the toughest, the roughest, the strongest, the quickest. Long story short, she's better than you, and you know it. How is that a babyface gimmick? Bianca is one of one. She does not relate to the everyman. She's a high achieving athlete and she certainly isn't modest about it. Bianca's like, I'm better than all y'all niggas. So run with that energy. The Bianca Belair I became a fan of was a heel. She was talking that talk in NXT and clapping her hands when she bragged about being undefeated. Bianca Belair at her core is a braggadocious shit talker. And if WWE tapped into that, she'll create more black girl magic than the Bridgerton spinoff. Wrestling's fan base, particularly the hardcores, have a contentious relationship with black women. I'd like to see Bianca exploit that and confront these trolls head on. You can only go so far with a baby face who wins all of her matches and talks about how great she is. People will resent that and start to protest. Bianca's reaction at Backlash wasn't an aberration, it was a warning. Fans aren't all going to turn on this queen at once, and they better not. But over time, if WWE sticks to the status quo with Bianca Belair, there's only one reaction WWE can expect, and it won't be the friendliest. Is it time for Bianca to go heel and stun on these niggas? How many EST words did you count in this video? Tell me in the comments!